Hello everybody, it's uh, it's almost 4 o'clock, it's 3.59, I figured I'd, I'd let you guys hop on, and um, while I'm on, <laughs> and, uh, and I'll just uh, settle in and get ready to uh, have you guys, and you guys can put comments on, this is, we're going to be talking about seasonal eating, we're going to be talking about how that impacts your health and your vitality, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, so don't be afraid to post questions, just try and make the questions you know, like in alignment to what we're actually talking about. So if I'm talking about seasonal eating, don't tell me about your hemorrhoid, right? <laughs> How do I fix my hemorrhoid? We're not going to cover that in this, in this, uh, you know, class right here. <laughs> I'm going to be on with you guys till about, you know, maybe 3.40, 3.45, uh, and we're going to cover some fun stuff. I also have my, um, my computer because I can't, I can't have the phone on at the same time and then answer questions. Hi, Vicky, and then answer questions. Hi, Adrian, <laughs> and all. And also, everyone like last time. Um, I remember I saw in the feed people were saying hi, hi. How come you're not saying hello to me? Because as people come in, the feed goes pretty quick, right? So unless I took like Evelyn Wood speed reading dynamics, I just can't. I can't. Oh, hi, Franny. <laughs> the hi, Bess. Uh, so I just can't, I can't answer them that quickly, but I'll get to you questions as often as I can. Uh, plus I have here to answer questions as well. Um, I have a, a computer. I'm surrounded by computers here. So settle in. We're going to be talking about seasonal eating and how that impacts your health. And I'm going to tell you, oh, thanks, Vicki. Hi, Donna. Uh, I'm going to tell you how, um, oh, and I'll make sure that this is off so you don't hear me there and hear me here because that would be awful. Oh my gosh, imagine Stereo Andrea. Woo, here she is, here she is. Okay, so I, I posted up a blog on Sunday about um, when is the best time to eat raw foods. And I think raw foods are great. I think they're delicious, they're wonderful, they're refreshing, they're cooling. So I posted up this blog about now, now, and this is for the Northeastern United States, right? Northeastern United States, right now we're in the middle of summertime. It is July, uh, you know, it is hot, it is sticky, so now is the perfect time of year for raw foods, raw fruits, raw vegetables, raw salads, you know, lettuces, right? So what do you think is the energy of raw foods? What do you think? Like, what, what makes raw foods perfect for the summertime? You guys could put that in, because I, I want you to be engaged, and I want you to be interacting here, because... It's important that you understand that there's certain times of the year when foods work best, right? So I just taught a class this morning at the Natural Gourmet in New York. And um, I was talking about the energy of eating seasonally and how that makes your internal environment in harmony with the external environment. Hi, Judy. <laughs> cooling, yes, Vicky, cooling. Uh, yes, Colette, they're cooling, fantastic. So. When you have your internal environment in harmony with the external environment, balance starts to happen. The endocrine system becomes balanced. Your pineal gland will become balanced. You'll be able to deal with the heat better. So, and you'll be able to deal with the cold better. Um, closer to the earth. Oh, okay, all right, that's a good one, <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> um, my soul has chrome, any advice? Uh, I, I don't know what that means. Um, okay. So, so when I was teaching the class this morning and I was talking about the seasonal foods and how when we eat what's in season, when we eat what's in season, it helps your body acclimate to where you are. You'll have more energy. You'll have more energy. You'll be more vibrant. You'll be able to handle sickness when it comes. So here's a great example. There was a gal in the class this morning, and when I was talking about seasonal eating, she said, um, hi, Claire, I'll get to that in, in one sec. She said that when her and her boyfriend or her husband used to go to Ireland, because he's from Ireland, she would continue eating her raw foods, and it was cold and it was damp in Ireland. She would continue eating her raw salads and her raw foods, and after a few years, she said, I can't do it anymore, and she started eating beef stew with potatoes. Perfect, right? Because once she started to eat the beef stew with the potatoes, she warmed up on the inside. So here, I got an email from a gal after I sent out my email. Uh, uh, she said, Andrea, her name is Rosie. She said, Andrea, you may be interested in this anecdotal story regarding a raw foods diet. Some years ago, a friend recommended I look into the 80-10-10 raw food diet, 80% carb, 10% protein, and 10% fat. So I joined an online discussion group. 
They ate mostly fruits and believed fats caused blood sugar problems. The whole diet would have been a nightmare in my condition. In trying to understand their reasoning, my questioning was so unwelcome, I was told to shut up and listen and eventually banned from the group, right? So I had an aha moment in one of your webinars a few months ago when you talked about warm foods being nourishing. Now I'll get to that after I finish this email, but that's very important. It was winter when I was participating in the online raw foods group and many people wrote of being cold. It was a common concern. Yet they clung to their raw foods religiously and dressed in extra layers and used hot water bottles rather than eating anything cooked. Your webinar let me see how contrary that was to what their bodies needed. Rosie, that is 100% right, and I see this all the time. People get stuck in a dieting mentality or one way of eating mentality, and they neglect to listen to their physical body and to the planet that they're living on. So the planet that you're living on, the Earth, beautiful planet, right? We love the Earth. Anywhere that you live, like I said, I live in the Northeastern United States. There are people that live in Canada and Brazil. They're all over the world. We have populated this planet. And in every single one of those environments, every single one of them, the earth provides what you need to be healthy within that environment. So right now in the Northeastern United States, there is an abundance of fruits and vegetables. And as Vicki said earlier, and Adrian said earlier, and a couple other people said, fruits and vegetables, their energy is cooling. So in the summertime, when it is 85 degrees, Raw fruits and vegetables are amazing. They're cooling, they're refreshing, right? Bring down inflammation, the whole thing. In the winter time, maybe not so smart. So I had, um, I had a friend who started a raw foods cleanse in January this past year. <laughs> she started the raw foods cleanse with her husband and they, they felt good until about midway through. She said she had to turn up the heat in the house and she was starting to feel tired and a little sluggish. Now, they're doing the same raw foods cleanse right now, July. They feel fantastic, the both of them. Fantastic. So you have to look at the energy of food and what the earth is providing naturally, and then we have to acclimate to that, not the other way around, right? So um, let's say I live in the desert, right? I could certainly have watermelon shipped in, I could have bananas shipped in, I could have all this stuff shipped in that's cooling. But what is the truth? What is naturally provided for in the desert for the animals and the creatures and the human beings that are living in the desert? Cactus. Cactus is mucilaginous. When you eat the cactus, it's got a gel-like substance which will help you retain water longer, right? So cactus is the perfect food if you're living in the desert. Perfect. Right? Prickly pear cactus, whatever you need. Um, oh, yes, Judy, thank you for agreeing. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, everybody. Uh, so this is why it's important to eat seasonally. Because wherever you are, the earth will provide for you uh, everything that you need. So Marie just said, could eating in your area seasons help with weight loss? Yes. Yes, Marie, 100%. So for example... If in the winter time you start eating more cooling foods, right? You go on a diet. That's a great question, Marie. You go on a diet in the winter time, and what do we think diet? We think, okay, I gotta, I gotta have uh, salads. I gotta, you know, lose some weight. I gotta no fat, right? We start to take out all these nutrients, and uh, in the winter time, that's when you need the fats and the meats and all that stuff. So in the winter time, we go on salads. So what happens is it cools down the inside of the body, but it's winter outside. It's winter. You walk outside and your body goes into a state of shock, right? It's cold on the inside. Now it's cold on the outside, right? What happens when you're cold? Does anybody know what happens when you're cold? Uh, what happens to your bodily processes? Anybody have any idea? Any? Nobody? Nobody has an idea? <laughs> I crave salads in the winter, but not in the summer. Tara, oh my gosh, where do you live? You crave salads in the winter, but not in the summer. Um, if you are cold on the inside, your metabolism will start to slow, right? Your processes will start to slow. Uh, your circulation will start to slow. Everything starts to slow. Cold contracts, right? Cold contracts where heat opens and warms. Uh, slows down, yes, Tina. Yes, great. And slows down, great. Uh, 
Dawn says, you're talking like we should all know what turmeric. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, put on fat. Yeah, Paula, in the wintertime, yes. So just like the gal that was in the class this morning was talking about how when she went to Ireland, which is cold and wet and damp, she couldn't continue her raw foods diet, her raw salads diet. She actually had to have the meat and potatoes so that she could feel healthy and vibrant in that environment. So our environment will give us lots of clues on what we can eat. But our mind will say, oh, I can't possibly listen to that. Right? So Maria's question about gaining weight, uh, you know, like weight loss, the best time for weight loss is in the spring and in the summertime. It's the best time. So Eva... Eva says, what's the best way to find out what is seasonal locally? I just moved to South Florida. Great. One of my favorite sources for finding out what's in season locally is localharvest.org. So it's localharvest.org. And I would put it in there into the computer, but yeah, it's pretty easy, right? So you go to localharvest.org and then you put in your zip code or you put in where you live, South Florida, and it'll pop up all of the farmer's markets and the CSAs in that area. So once you know where the farmer's markets are, you go there and you see what's available and what's in season. So in New York State, there is a law. Yes, Vinny, local farmer's market, very smart. Uh, yes, Tara, shop your farmer's markets. Um, so I went to the farmer's market this morning in Union Square in New York. It was berries, berries all over the place, peaches, nectarines, lots of lettuces, lots of greens, lots of... of vibrant fruits and vegetables, right? In the wintertime when I go to the farmer's market, none of those berries are there. By the way, in the farmer's market, there's no coconuts in New York, there's no bananas, but you can get them in any store anywhere. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's good for you. Um, sorry, Dawn says, so how is turmeric such a healing herb meant to say? Um, well, turmeric has an acrid flavor, and that's, that's actually great. Each of the seasons has a specific food, and each of the foods that we eat also have a flavor. So raw foods in general, right, and we're going to get to turmeric, raw foods in general has a slightly sour, slightly bitter, and often slightly sweet flavor. That's raw foods, right? Slightly sweet, not totally sweet. Like even, even a strawberry that's raw has a slightly sour flavor and a slightly sweet, but if you cook that strawberry, you put it into the oven and you roast it, or you put it on the grill, it caramelizes, it brings the carbohydrates and the sugars up to the surface and it makes it sweeter. So, like this gal said, that uh, she was in one of my webinars a few months ago when I talked about warm foods being nourishing, because the nourishing, the warm, the sweet flavor does what? It helps to build the body. It's very nourishing. Um, it helps to expand, it helps you to grow. So what happens when we eat too much sweet flavor? Right, or too much cooked food? We get all bloated, really, really heavy, right? So this gal also wrote, uh, Rosie, she wrote, by the way, as much as I love some raw foods, I've been, I've been able to tolerate very little to none for about the past 10 years. That means that she actually has a condition called a cold digestive fire. So this is where turmeric would come in handy, right? Because turmeric is kind of acrid. It's also spicy. It's got a lot of heat. Ginger would come in handy. Cinnamon. So when she eats any raw foods, she'd probably do well to have some type of spice, some type of hot stuff in there, maybe some radish, but also to make sure that her digestive fire is stoked, meaning that, uh, oh, it's 413. Meaning that um, she... She would do well with some warming bitters, right? Something that's bringing warmth constantly to the digestive system. So uh, I think it was the Buddha that said uh, a piece of ginger every day to nourish your health, right? So what does ginger do, right? What is ginger? You guys know. Ginger is hot. It's spicy. You eat ginger and what does it do? That spice, that heat brings heat. It brings warmth. It brings circulation. It brings blood to the digestive system. That's what it does. So... You could certainly, like I know people that have smoothies all the time, smoothie this and smoothie that. <laughs> and you know, all these, they go smoothie crazy. When I have a smoothie, you know what I put in my smoothie? I put in either ginger or I put in cinnamon. Why? Because if I had frozen blueberries and frozen strawberries and frozen this and frozen that, it's very cold. It can be really hard on the digestive system. It can 
actually contract the digestive system and maybe cause bloating. So a lot of people will have, if they go on a raw foods diet or a, you know, too many cold foods, they notice that the lower abdomen becomes bloated, right? They'll eat something and they get bloated. That means they have a cold digestive fire. And when you have a cold digestive fire, either A, you heat up your food or you put something warm and spicy in there. So Annalise says, Uh, oh, Marie says, should thyroid people eat warming food and herbs? Yeah, especially if they have hypothyroid and they are cold, right? So a lot of hypothyroid people have a tendency to be cold or cool. So they should absolutely have warming herbs. Chamomile, that's one of my favorite, like, warming herbs. It's traditional, right? People would have chamomile tea after dinner. How many people are doing that? How many people are still having chamomile tea? It's nice and warming. Uh, it's carminative. It's good for the digestive system. So if you have a cold condition, then certainly have some warming herbs. I think that's great. So Annalisa says, seasonal eating is a lot like TCM diet and lifestyle. Also, no matter how hot it is, I don't put ice in my drinks. Shocks the body, like you said, changes your digestion and the ability to break down food. Uh, I love ginger. I carry it in my pocket. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, you know, there's, it's a lot of TCM because this, you know, TCM is thousands of years old. So raw foods diet is um, modern. Paleo diet, this is all modern ideas of food. Uh, macrobiotics, right, all modern ideas of food. Atkins, you know, we have all these diets. But the TCM or traditional Chinese medicine, which was connecting you back to the seasons, back to the environment, this is thousands of years old. It's like Ayurveda, right? Ayurveda, again, connect you back to the seasons, back to the environment, because that's how healing happens. That's how your body gets balanced. So if you are out of balance, if you are feeling overweight, if you are not feeling vibrant, if you're not feeling um, strong and healthy, first align yourself with the seasons. It just makes perfect sense. I've had clients that all they did was simply get back in touch with what was available and growing in their area and they started to drop weight, right? And then the people that were cold, so I had a client in Canada, she's very funny. I had a client in Canada and she had hypothyroid and she was freezing all the time. She was just freezing all the time. And, uh, and I said, okay, what are you eating? She's like, I'm having a smoothie for breakfast and I'm having salads for lunch and I'm having a big salad for dinner. I said, okay. You know, and, and at the time I was working with her, it was the middle of winter in Canada and she had like six feet of snow outside her window. I said, it's time for you to have soups and stews and warming foods and more fats. And guess what happened in two weeks, right? So she'd been freezing cold for years and in two weeks, she heated up her system. She started to lose weight. She started to sleep better, right? So some of the symptoms, uh, oh, Nikki says, sadly, I can't find seasonal fruits here in Miami. Even at the farmer's market, they sell Washington apples. What's the solution? I've been trying to pick fruit that at least comes from the same climate. Actually, Nikki, let me get, I may be better to see it here because I can't really get that one over there. Um, uh, Nikki says, I've been trying to pick fruit that at least comes from the same climate, but damn, ideas. Okay, so when I go to Florida, right, so you're in uh, Miami, you said? Yeah. When I go to Florida and I'm walking around the neighborhood in Miami, guess what I see all over the place? Mango trees. They're everywhere. My, my husband's family have mango trees in their backyard. So one of the, the local seasonal foods in Miami is is mangoes. They're, they're all over. They're practically hitting people on the head, right? Falling off the trees, hitting people on the head. So the subtropical food, fruits are the perfect ones for you. Apples, which are great, are more northern. They're definitely more northern climate, right? Um, you could certainly eat them just like I could eat mangoes here in New York, for sure. I, sometimes I put I have mangoes, especially in the summertime, I like mangoes. Um, but if you want to stay seasonal, Go to uh, localharvest.org and maybe join a CSA. So a CSA is a community-supported agriculture. And community-supported agriculture means that you are purchasing direct from the farmer. So I would definitely hop on with a, a CSA that has fruit, right? So my CSA has fruit here in New York, and right now plums and peaches and nectarines are coming in, right, as well as all the berries. 
So if you can't find the food, the right food for you at the farmer's market, then join a CSA. It's the best deal in town. Um, okay, so Pam says, hi, Andrea. I love avocados and I can't find anything. What is the best way to go? I love avocados. Well, avocados are subtropical fruit, right? So you could certainly eat avocados up north or wherever you live, Pam. But keep in mind that when you take yourself out of your environment, more often than not, you throw the body out of balance. So it doesn't happen immediately. It happens over time. So over time, there's a structural breakdown that happens. So when we're constantly eating food outside of our environment, it damages and weakens the valve. So this is where you have the weakening of the ileocecal valve. That's a valve that, that keeps the small intestine and the large intestine separate. And when that gets weak, you're going to have problems with candida. You're going to have problems with depression. And when I'm talking about depression, I'm talking about in, within the digestive system. So that'll look like a damp condition, right? A damp, depressed, wet condition. And when that happens, there'll be higher rates when you have a damp, depressed, wet condition inside the body, you'll have higher rates of cancer, asthma, uh, digestive disorders, candida. So this is all stuff to keep in mind because we think, oh, it's avocados, they're in the store. Bananas, you know, they're right in the store. Or a mango, like for me in New York, a mango or a coconut, it's right in the store. But I can tell you right now that in the 20 years that I've been part of a CSA, a community supported agriculture, I've never gotten coconut. <laughs> I've never gotten a coconut. I've never gotten a mango, right? I, I, it, it just can't grow here. So if it cannot grow here, it's actually not the right food for my physical body in this environment. It doesn't mean that I can never have a coconut. It doesn't mean that I can never have a mango. It doesn't mean that I can never have a banana. It means that the majority of my food, when it comes from this environment, that's a perfect food for my system, right? For where I live. Just like I talked about uh, the desert area before, right? So let me see. So Jackie says, I'm a diabetic who is dealing with leaky gut, hypothyroidism, candida, and Hashimoto's. Jackie, oh my God. Jackie, you're still alive for gosh sakes. So that's a good sign. <laughs> um, you got a lot going on. She says, I've been on a very strict diet due to the leaky gut. I have to be careful of fruits due to the diabetes. What raw fruits should I eat that won't spike my blood sugar? Well, that's, again, now here's a misconception. I think fruits are fantastic. You know, fruits are not necessarily, depending on the fruit, going to spike your blood sugar. So uh, if you eat an apple, which is filled with fiber and water, this is very different than eating a candy bar, right? If you eat, if you eat berries, which are rich in vitamin C and antioxidants and everything else that they come with in fiber and water, it's not necessarily going to spike your blood sugar. So, you know, we've been afraid of fruit for a long time. As if, you know, that's the fruit, fruit is natural sweetener. You know, that's, you know, this is summertime right now. And this is where fruits are abundance. This is when you should be eating it. So because of all the stuff that you have going on, the leaky gut probably came from eating out of season for many, many years, as well as you could get leaky gut from not being breastfed. Right, not being breastfed, over abuse of antibiotics, all that stuff. Um, Marie says, aside from fruits and veggies, how about animal proteins for seasonal eating? That's a great question, Marie. Um, and a lot of these are coming in really, really quick. Uh, so, yeah, animal proteins are wonderful. So, like I talked about, the girl, uh, the I the girl that went to Ireland, right? So, you could certainly they. Definitely, animal proteins are seasonal as well. So for those of you that have ever been on a farm that has chickens, you know that in the springtime, those chickens start laying eggs like crazy. They just pop an eggs out like nobody's business. And what happens in the wintertime? Egg laying slows down. Sometimes they don't lay an egg for a couple weeks, right? So what does that say? When is the best time for eggs? Probably spring and summertime. Best time for eggs. How about heavy meats? How about venison? How about... How about uh, buffalo? When do you think would be the best time for venison and buffalo? Winter time. This would be winter time, right? Uh, you could certainly have buffalo and venison in the summertime, but better off probably having chicken, fish, something lighter, easier to digest. Uh, e some eggs, you know, have a little cob salad, for gosh sakes. You know, like everybody's under the impression they're going to die if they don't eat any animal protein. And then, of course, you have the other side of the coin that says, you know, that you're going to die if you eat animal protein, right? The vegans. 
<laughs> so we got all these, this crazy stuff going on. So if you can, listen to your physical body. So like this gal said earlier, she was on that website with the raw foods people and none of them was listening to their body. The body was freezing. They're putting on sweater after sweater after sweater using hot water bottles. They couldn't warm up. Yeah, chicken soup would have helped. Chicken soup, beef stew, right? That would have helped. Um, okay, so Tanya says, I love eating seasonal in Michigan. So much yummy fruits and veggies right now. Just ate fresh cukes, celery, and banana peppers for natural detox cleansing. That's perfect. Also, this is the best time of year for cleansing. Spring, summer, and into early fall, best time of year for cleansing the body. You want to cleanse the liver. You want to cleanse the kidneys. This is the best time of year. Uh, winter time, not the best time of year. If there is three feet of snow outside or it's 20 degrees, you don't want to start cleansing your body. You want to actually heat it up. You want to warm it up. You want to keep it, keep it nourished. Otherwise, you're going to start to dip into your bones. And this is the structural breakdown. When you start to dip into your reserves, you're going to lose bone health. You're going to lose bone strength. Uh, osteoporosis, osteopenia, this is the stuff that's going to start to come to the forefront. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Annalise, Marie, Dacia, oh, Dacia says, what raw foods are good for the thyroid and what should I avoid? Well, there's a lot of raw foods that are great for the thyroid, depending on your condition, right? So if you have a cold digestive system, which we talked about earlier, and it's 4.30, we'll go another five minutes, you know, and then I'll, I'll just do a lot of Q&A. Although I could just keep going like this, because, you know, I, I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> so uh, if you have a thyroid condition and you have a cold digestive fire, then raw foods may not be the best, they may not be the ideal, but you may need a cleanse depending on where you're at. So... If your liver is congested, what is one of the best things for liver congestion? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Come on, let's go. Snap on it, you people. Get those little fingers going. Does anybody know what some of the best foods to alleviate liver congestion is? Oh my gosh, all right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you for gosh sakes, because otherwise we'll be here till four o'clock in the morning. A beet story, that's good. <laughs> Ant says beets too. Oh my God, Marie says beets. Everybody's talking about beets. Lemon, yes. Patricia, that's great. Uh, cat, wow, we got a lot of beet people in the house. <laughs> Dandelion, Marie, you're good, you're good. Uh, lemon water, Victoria, yes. Uh, dandelion greens, yes, Jacqueline, that's correct. Uh, lemon, yes, so you guys are on the right path, right? Um, bitters, yes, Vicky, bitters are amazing for the uh, liver congestion, right? Cilantro, another good one. Leafy greens, yes, Sydney, Cindy. Uh, dandelion, Mercedes says, yes, of course, brassica veggies. Actually, brassica Judy are good for the, um, the second phase of liver detox. So, yes, brassica veggies are awesome. Uh, milk thistle, Dory, yeah, milk thistle. Uh, okay, so you guys got it. You guys got it. So, if you have a thyroid condition, right, uh, it could say, it could be that there is liver congestion. And I'm pointing, you can't see my liver. I'm pointing down to the right side underneath my rib cage. If you have a thyroid condition, you may not be converting T4 to T3 because of liver congestion. So, if that's the case, it's not so much whether you should eat raw or eat cooked or eat, right? It's more about, okay, let's cleanse the liver first. Let's get a nice little cleanse of the liver first and then start to eat seasonally, right? So, milk thistle, dandelion greens, bitters, all of the beets, everybody was talking, you know, like, Probably doing salads every single day for a month would be a good idea. Salads, fruits. But if you have a cold digestive fire, which is often the case with a thyroid condition, those raw salads won't really work. So then you got to go to what Vicky was talking about, which is bitters, and what Jacqueline was talking about, dandelion, right? So this you would get in tincture form, and you'd have it, and you'd start to have it every single day. Milk thistle, I think somebody said, was it Dan, uh, said milk thistle amazing food for uh, um, for the liver and I say food because each of our organs requires specific foods to function well and also specific flavors so for the liver the sour flavor is ideal as well as the bitter flavor so the bitter flavor helps to flush and clear the digestive system and the sour flavor helps to with the production of bile right and it also has an astringing quality. And when I say astringing, I want you to think uh, lemon, right? So somebody said lemon. What happens when you have a lemon? You have this happening, right? So when this happens, 
There's also the opposite that happens, right? So this is yin and yang, right? Contraction and then expansion. So this is kind of a way to wash your cells, right? So anytime that you go to a spa, what do they have in the morning? Lemon water, right? Uh, you know, they have something sour uh, because this is really a natural cleansing. You go down and, um, but also somebody had read, read, talked about how they're eating, uh, you know, peppers and uh, cucumbers and all that stuff. That's also very cleansing and very cooling. Right, so depending, do you have inflammation, do you have congestion, what do you have going on? Everybody's body is different. So you see all over the place, uh, you know, this diet and that diet and this, but somebody can have a condition where that diet doesn't actually work. Um, celery juice is great to build uh, hydrochloric acid in the tummy. Uh, yeah, celery juice is great. Want to know why? Because it contains salts. And salt helps to stimulate the production of hydrochloric acid. So traditionally, when somebody had low hydrochloric acid, you would add salt, more salt to their food to stimulate the production of hydrochloric acid. So celery juice is great. It has celery salts. Um, Annalisa says, great detox for the liver too. Yeah, anytime that you're juicing, you're taking the energy off of digestion, right? So a lot of people go on juices and they're like, man, I feel fantastic. And then there are other people that go on juice cleanse and they're like, oh my God, I feel awful. I feel terrible. I feel bloated. Right? So you have to look at the condition. Um, mineral salts. Yes, Annalise. Okay. So, uh, I would love to back up. Roberta says, I would love to back up the intuition notice I have experienced when I have, when I have view people. At the time, my mind goes to EO. Oh, essential oils is just food to the body systems, but I lack experience knowing just what I am seeing on a person. Um, actually, you may want to take my um, New Healers coaching program. That's in January 2017. Uh, Erica Beeman, who's also on this call today, uh, she'll send you the link to that. But that can help you diagnose and understand conditions better, right? Whether it's a damp condition, stagnant condition, um, congestion, uh, cold condition, hot condition, inflammation. You know, you'll know because those essential oils you have to be careful with because they're extremely, what time is it, 431? They're extremely concentrated, so they have an extreme reaction in the body. I've had, I've had clients and students have terrible reactions from taking too much essential oils, right? So they can, like oregano oil, can have the, the potential to dry out the system too much. So I've had people that have had oregano oil and then their whole entire skin gets dry, dry, cracked. Um, you know, it'll dry out the sinuses. I've had people that have been taking oregano oil internally to kill bacteria or whatever they want to do. Like, they like, oh, it cures candida, like all this crazy stuff on the web that you find. And then they find that they get bloody noses. It dries out their sinuses. So this, you want to have the mucilage in here. You want to have this, uh, warm and wet, right? And I'm pointing to my nose for those, right? You want this warm and wet, this area. Um, you don't want this to be dry and cracked and hard. Uh, because this is part of your protection for your immune system. This is when you're breathing in, that warm, wet moistens the air so that it goes into your lung and it doesn't cause problems, right? So if you have dry, cracked, guess what's going to happen? Cold air can come in here. Cold is not good for the lungs. Cold is, is a bad condition for the lungs. You'll have more susceptibility to colds and flus and viruses and all that stuff. So um, uh, Justine says, what fruits and veggies are good for estrogen? I'm experiencing, oh, where did that go? I'm experiencing menopause and gaining belly, belly weight. Justine, that's a good question. It's not about, like, I know that we, we're stuck in this understanding of the body, but I'm going to suggest that you get your body in alignment with the seasons, right? So when I talked about earlier, when we first started this at 4 o'clock, I said, when you get your internal environment in harmony with the seasons, right? Or you in harmony with your external environment, it creates balance. And when I'm talking about balance, I'm talking about the endocrine system and the nervous system, right? That's what I'm talking about. So first, it's not a matter of fruits and vegetables that will promote a good for estrogen, although there are many, right? So you have like uh, red clover, right? This is a uh, estrogenic herb. When does it grow? Right now. Summertime, <laughs> right? Spring, Summertime, it's growing like wildflowers, literally all over the place. It's also part of the Lamiace. I think it's called the Lamiace family, right? The, the bean family. So you, you'd harvest some red clover or buy some red clover. This is great. 
It's great for estrogen, right, and supporting your hormones. So it's one of the reasons why red clover is used when people have cysts, right, or they have uh, fibroids. You know, they, they want that stuff because it can help clear the system. It binds to the receptors so that you have less of the other stuff binding to the receptors, whether it is um, uh, the estrogenic compounds and all of the BPA and all the plastic and all the stuff that's in our environment, but that's a whole nother class, <laughs> right? So this is about seasonal eating. <laughs> right, so when you get your internal environment in harmony with the external environment, you're naturally balancing your endocrine system as well as your nervous system. And this is going to help all of your systems, all the systems. Uh, so Jackie says, what would be some good summer protein snacks for someone struggling with blood sugar? Um, uh, nuts and seeds, fish, uh, good protein snack. Uh, you know, also... If you're struggling with blood sugar, it's not so much that you need the protein, although it does help. If you're struggling with blood, it means that the cell is congested. The cell itself is congested. So why are the cells congested? Do they, do they need a detoxification? Is there too much fat in the diet, right? Because you know that the job of, uh, of, of your pancreas is to secrete insulin, right? And the insulin is like the key that goes to the cell and unlocks it and says, okay, have the sugar. It's time for sugar. We need energy, right? But if that cell is congested and thick and gummy and filled with sugar already, then you're not going to be absorbing that sugar properly. Your blood sugar is going to stay high. You may even have um, insulin resistance where your cell says, I'm not opening up. I'm not taking in any, any more sugar. I got too much sugar in here already. So you have to look at other factors as well. Um, there's a lot to look at. Uh, so before I go on to the rest of the questions, because we just have about 10 more minutes. For those of you that are interested in learning more about understanding the body and how we're totally connected to the environment and the earth that we're living on, I am teaching a class this weekend at Omega Institute. How many of you have been to Omega Institute? It's a world-renowned institute. People come from all over the world to come here and see stay for a weekend or stay for a week, and it's, it's located in Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, oh, thanks to that. It's located in Rhinebeck, New York, and uh, it's, it's awesome, and, and I love Omega. You know, it's, it's just a, it's like a retreat. It's in the woods. You get, get, get to go hiking. There's a pristine lake there. You get to go swimming, and then you get classes. So, like, there's yoga in the morning or Tai Chi or meditation, and then during the day, you can take a class like my class, <laughs> which is all about seasonal eating for vibrant health and achieving your ideal weight. Because when you are healthy, when your body is in alignment, You'll naturally lose weight in the spring and gain weight, but not an unhealthy weight in the winter time. So naturally, every single winter, I put on about five to seven pounds, but it's not a blubbery weight. It's almost like it's an internal denseness that I feel in my bones, right? So it's a totally different kind of weight. And by the way, the winter time is one of the... When we don't nourish ourselves properly in the winter time, like I know we're in the height of summer right now, and everybody's like, summer, woohoo! In the wintertime, when we don't properly nourish ourselves, our body will steal nutrients from the bones because this is your deepest, your deepest nutrient base. It's also where the bone marrow is you're creating the red blood cells, right? So your ability to have energy. So the, the blood is supporting every single organ, every single bone, everything, right? So in this class this weekend at Omega, I am uh, I'm teaching what do you need in each season, spring, summer, fall, winter, what are the best foods, what are the best herbs, what's the best time to cleanse, what do you do for a cleanse, uh, you know, as well as which organ systems need what. Okay, if your liver is congested, this is what you need to do. If your kidneys are in a state of deficiency, this is what you need to do. If the bones are breaking down, this is what you need to do. We're going to cover all of that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend. You arrive on Friday, we have our first uh, introduction on Friday night. Um, you know, I think it's uh, the class starts at 7, from 7 to 10 on Friday night. Saturday, we have class from 9 to 5. And then Sunday, we have class from 9 to 12. And, uh, and like I said, while you're there, you can go swim in the lake. You can take a hike. One of my favorite things to do. Uh, the, plus, the food at Omega is all local and seasonal. So you don't have to do any cooking, any cleaning, no dishes, right? And you get to eat three meals a day of, of great food, local seasonal food. I'll tell you what to eat, how to eat it. You know, all that stuff. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. Uh, so that's this weekend. So we got about um, 
six more. Oh, has, who has gone to Omega? Let me see. Nobody's gone to Omega? I think I need to move. Jeanette says, I think I need to move. <laughs> uh, Ken East says, just watch out for some people selling produce that is out of season or out of region to fill in their counters. Yes, you're correct. So in New York State, we have a law that at the farmer's market, you can't be outside of a 300-mile radius. So there are other farmer's markets, and I've experienced this. I've been, you know, like whenever I travel, I always go to a farmer's market. I'll go to a farmer's market in Alaska. I'll go to a farmer's market in Colorado. I go anywhere that I am in Costa Rica. I go to the farmer's market because I want to see what's available. And a lot of times, I'll see food that is not indigenous to that environment. And I know that it was shipped in, and they have it at the farmer's market. But like I said, in New York, we have a law which is there's a 300 it's either 250 or a 300 mile radius where you can't bring in food that's outside that radius which is great it supports the local community we support the local farmers you support your health you support the health of the environment right okay so Francis says, if I'm doing a full body detox, would you recommend an all raw, raw diet? I'm trying. Yes, actually, Fran, if you're doing a full body detox, and I know you live in Connecticut, so you're right here on the northeastern United States, this is the perfect time of year for you to do all raw. I would never recommend this for you in the middle of winter time, um, but right now, absolutely. Raw salad, have fruit for breakfast, have salad for lunch. Uh, do raw, do it for 30 days uh, and see what happens. If your belly gets bloated, then start to put in some teas, some warming teas. Um, have ginger tea, uh, you know, even cinnamon, right? Put cinnamon on, on something or in, in your tea. You can even have a cinnamon, warm cinnamon or cinnamon clove tea or something like that or even warm apple juice with some cinnamon, some cloves just to heat up your digestive fire uh, if you find that you're getting bloated. Because sometimes people just can't digest so many raw foods. Uh, you know, they are very cleansing. They are very cooling. You'll find that you may, like while you're doing your raw foods cleanse, you may find that you find air conditioning offensive, <laughs> right? Because your body starts to cool down, starts to get cold, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I can't be on. Like for me in New York, when in you know, if I'm eating watermelon and I'm already naturally cool or berries and I'm naturally cooled down and I get on the New York City subway and they have that cranked up to like, I don't know, 30 degrees. It's like a meat locker. I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible. So it actually gives me the incentive to walk everywhere, <laughs> right? Walk everywhere. Uh, okay, so let me just refresh this page so I can see the new comments that have come in. Okay, so Maria, <laughs> Maria says pizza, you can eat it in any season or climate. Yes, yes, especially if you're Italian. <laughs> it's, it's part of your, it's part of your cell structure. Um, Pam says, when will you be live again? Uh, I don't know, maybe September, uh, maybe, I don't think August, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to take August off, uh, but uh, let's see. Oh, I, I think I refreshed wrong. Let me try this one. Don Mitchell. Yeah, it's coming up over there too. Don says, thank you for your time online. You're awesome. God bless. I wish I could come from Bulgaria to, uh, for time to learn. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of these days you'll come over. That would be great. Um, Ra Raquel says, I want that curse. Oh, I want that curse online. I know what you mean. <laughs> I want that course online. Um, Eventually, I'll probably put a, a seasonal eating course online. I just did a couple of webinars about that. Eventually, I'll do that. Um, thank you, Erica, for sharing the link to Omega. Pam says she loves Omega. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Justine, please come to California. Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be out to California. I like California. That's pretty cool. Uh, Dory says, Andrea, you're amazing. Oh, thanks, Dory. Uh, you're welcome. I love sharing. I love sharing knowledge. Like I was teaching a class this morning and I was telling the students that were in the class, you know, like you got to have passion for what you do because before you know it, you're going to be in and out of this lifetime and you're going to be like, oh my God, it went by like this, right? So it like, if you think about 
like you're does anybody have any memories of them being two or four years old right uh, and then before you know it 14 years old you're a teenager then before you know it you're in your 20s and then before you know it, you're in your 30s and then before you know it, you're in your 40s you blink your eye boom you're in your 50s right so your your life is gonna go by very quickly and if you don't have passion or desire or purpose you're gonna get to the end of the life and go oh my god what the heck <laughs> what was I doing all these years I didn't do the things that I loved, right? I, I, I should have done this. I should have done that. I could have did this. I could have did that. Instead, I, I would like you to really get in touch with what it is that you want to do. What do you want to do, right? And this is in every season, right? In every season. What do you want to do? Because beyond food and beyond fruits and vegetables and meats and proteins and fats, we are... We need to feed our soul, right? We need to feed our heart. And if we go through this whole life grinding away at a job we hate, in a relationship that makes us sick, uh, right? If we're doing things that we really hate, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get to the end of your life and you're going to go, man, this stunk. But I want you to get to the end of your life and go, oh my God, this journey was awesome. I loved being a human being. I loved it. I loved my job. I loved what I did for a living. I loved doing whatever I wanted to do. I loved traveling. I loved, and it could be anything. You know, it could be anything, but please feed your heart while you're here. Because like this, you're going to blink your eyes, the life is going to be over, right? Uh, you know, like I'm, I'm 48, I'm rolling up on 50. I'm telling you, it goes really, really quick. And the older you get, the quicker it gets, right? It gets more and more condensed. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, Vicky says it's on my bucket list. Oh, to go to Omega. Yeah, Omega's great. I love Omega. I love Omega. I love Kripalu. I love healing centers all over the world. I want to go check some healing centers out in Europe as well. Uh, Dawn, you're welcome. Uh, Paulo says, I'm from Costa Rica. I wish to meet you someday. You're great. Oh, great. I go to Costa Rica a lot. I, I Actually, there's a, a retreat there that I like. It's 446. There's a retreat there that I like. Um... Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name, but if anybody knows it, please put it in. And I, 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 I've done two Qigong uh, retreats out there. You know, I love taking classes. Please put me in a class where I'm learning about healing and about the body and I'm in heaven. Um, but I, I forgot the name of the retreat place. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Mary Lou says, I'm 59 and 411. What is a healthy weight, would you say, at this stage of life? Um, I, I don't know. It depends. You know, it depends if you have... Uh, small bones, medium bones, or large bones. Uh, Alessandra says, what seasonal food can help me with hormone imbalance? I'm from Mexico at Tijuana. Alessandra, for hormone imbalance, remember, you have to look at the liver, right? Because the liver is uh, not only in, in responsible for the process of creating hormones, not all your hormones, but some of your hormones, it's also responsible for the breakdown of all the hormones. So let's say somebody is estrogen sensitive or estrogen positive or they have high estrogen, right? It's not a matter of simply cutting out estrogenic, estrogenic foods or estrogen rich foods. You have to get the liver functioning properly. Otherwise, you always have a problem. So if your hormones are out of balance, you got to look to the liver. So one of the things that I recommend for hormone imbalance is motherwort tea. Motherwort tea, I love it. Um, it'll help to cool down liver inflammation, cool down the digestive fire. Uh, it's very cleansing. It's very supportive for the hormones. There's a reason why it's called mother wart, right? It's, it's beneficial to mothers. So I'm going to come over here because that one I can't see. And also, we only have a couple minutes left. Char says, are grain seasonal? Yes, they are. Mainly the good ones such as quinoa, buckwheat. Um, quinoa, buckwheat. We try to avoid wheat, but I wonder if grains are seasonal. Yes, Char. Grains are seasonal, and wheat is not the devil, right? So civilizations were built on wheat, and wheat is generally, or was generally, a building fall and winter food, right? So um, bread and soup. But we took wheat, and we started eating it all year round, every meal, right? Of course, it's going to damage us. It's not good for us. As well as what we've done to the wheat. We hybridized it. We made the proteins more than, you know, like we, we made them have twice as much protein, three times as much protein, and it's not healthy. We can't digest it, right? So an old-fashioned, you know, spelt or kamut or something like that with the normal protein and eaten, you know, not all the time would be the ideal. And if you have an illness... Right, and you have inflammation, take wheat out, right? Because it can be hard to digest for a lot of people. So you take wheat out. And grains are seasonal, right? So uh, 
there are lots of grains, like for example, let's look at buckwheat, buckwheat and kasha. These are cold weather grains, right? I, so let's look at quinoa. Quinoa is temperate, it's temperate climate. You could probably have that three seasons out of the year. Uh, corn, corn, we all know corn is very summery. It's very summery, but also when you go to pol you know, polenta, it's, it's classic in like Mediterranean cooking. And I love polenta, especially in the summertime. Please give me polenta, give me some sauteed vegetables, little piece of fish on top of it. Oh my gosh, I'm in heaven. Um, Annalise says, you are one of my all-time favorite holistic nutrition health coaches. Ah, thank you, honey. <laughs> thank you. Well, right now you just won my BFF award. Best friend forever. <laughs> uh, Marie said, thank you for this all seasons hug. Sending it back to you. Claire says, what foods are good for liver cleansing? We already discussed that. So Claire, as soon as this video ends, you can hop off and then hop back on and watch the recording. Uh, Cindy says, thanks for sharing your passion and knowledge. It's a joy to listen to you and it helps me remember my passion. Fantastic. Okay. So I want to thank everybody for hopping on with me today. And I, you know, just take care of yourself to the best of your ability. Align yourself with your environment wherever you live. Eat the food that grows there most often. Meaning you can certainly have food from other climates and other seasons and other places, but make 90% of your diet or at least 80% of your diet the food that is provided by nature for you where you live. That's going to be the best food for you, regardless of whether it's going to help your hormones or feed your, you know, not feed the bacteria, affects your blood, blood sugar, right? Get seasonal, get local. Um, okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, okay, so Claire, so you hop back on once the recording's going to be ready and you check it out. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. Have a wonderful summer. Uh, if I see you this weekend, we get to hug in person. Seasonal hugs, warm, delicious hugs, right? <laughs> Although if they have the air conditioning on, that would be awful. But that's what happens. Um, can you tell me the website for the local farmer's market? Yes, Annalisa, it's localharvest.org. Uh, okay, so thanks, everybody. Have a great summer. Keep cool this summer. Watermelon, fruits, vegetables, salads. Go crazy and, uh, and enjoy everything. Okay. Bye. I don't know how to turn this off. <laughs>